Hey guys, here's a video of my new bike. Just doing a little quick run around. Alright, so we got a 20 inch uh, X5306 in the back on a 203 millimeter rotor with brake. Still gotta work on the mount a bit, but it's there, it'll work. Followed by two racks. I will be using to support my batteries in the back. And also I'm gonna mount two batteries along the side of bo uh, both sides of the frame right there, as you can see. Um, what else can I show you? So that is pretty much the bike. Got a nice little seat too, air filled with the little valve in the back, which is pretty sick. And yeah, that's how I mounted everything. So you guys see it. I got pretty lucky there. Had to cut the frame just a, a, a little bit just to uh, get that to work, but dual frame, however you want to look at it, or dual uh, uh, post mount there. Next I'm going to show you is my A13 pack that I've worked very hard on. Okay, so these plates are, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is correct, it's 0 .0032 of an inch thick, if you guys can see that, and they're soldered on, so the tabs are bent over on the A123s and they're soldered to, to the, the copper sheets, beautifully all the way around, and it's held together by uh, polyurethane glue. It comes in a caulking tube I bought at Home Depot. And yeah, these things were a pain in the ass to heat up, but you had to get them really hot to make sure that they they hit the tabs good. And I have two uh, 4P 12 series right there. And I got two 4P 10 series there. A lot of work to do that. You don't want to know. But anyways. Uh, next, I got for you my precious 24 MOSFET controller with IRF B4115s. Got my little on switch. Got a low voltage cutoff. Thank you to Kiwin. He uh, helped me a lot uh, to understand how this works, and I really appreciate it. Um, I built this myself. It's got eight gauge traces inside, a lot of solder on the traces. Should cut, and it comes with a factory 100 amp shunt. I've added just a few little features. Um, this light here just lights up. There's the runs off the 5 volt rail. The controller's on. My low voltage cut off. I can adjust it. Right now it's set at about 125, 130 volts with this pot. I have my cycle analyst port that I modded myself. USB programmable. I have the software. I have not done it yet. Little five. Uh, I think five will break. Your throttle. 10 gauge phase wires. I'm gonna probably cut these shorter, but it's 10 gauge, which will be okay. And uh, for the power, I didn't go too crazy here, to be honest, but these are gonna probably be very short anyways, but it's dual sand strands of 12 gauge. I'm probably gonna have a foot coming out of the controller, so I'm not too worried about anything heating up. To get these packs together, I'm gonna be using uh, this wire here. Now it does say four gauge on it, but I say it's kind of a knockoff now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of manufacturers, I guess, jip people that try to buy wire. But if you put this in a six or eight gauge 75 amp power pole, it fits. I think it's similar to eight gauge. However, the wire says four gauge. So you tell me what you think, but it's pretty damn thick if you ask me. I mean, you compare that to my finger. It's pretty thick. So what my intention is, I'll show this just for Dr. Bess, but I'm gonna run wire like that. So strands, just one in the middle, connected to my next battery pack and so forth, one from each end. Now, Doc, I know you told me in the past, and I've obviously learned, but you told me to run one wire here, one wire here, to connect to the next battery pack. So this is what I wanna do. You let me know if I should do it the other way around, and then I'll do it, because I haven't decided yet, but I'd like to use this wire, definitely. It's so thick and it's awesome. So yeah, those are the main things. And um, I don't know if anyone's done this as well, but I'm not gonna open anything, but the cycle on this here, um, I did a lot of work to it. Um, this used to be a external shunt cycle analyst. I modified it to a direct plug-in. Uh, also while modifying it, when I was trying to reprogram it, I managed to screw up the the, the microchip inside, which is like the processor 
I would say, or the chip that stores all the uh, the data, I guess, for the software. So I managed to mess that up. So on this one, I did a lot of surgery. I removed the chip, I replaced it, I reprogrammed it. I also modified it to run 200 volts and it works perfectly. It hasn't burnt out, surprisingly. Uh, I've tested it to run up to 144 volts, just direct plug into my controller, which I haven't tested it. Actually, I have tested on this controller yet. That's where I did it. So I have pretty much everything done. Um, the only other thing is getting it on the bike. And uh, the last thing I'll show you guys as well, which I've already showed this on other videos, but it's my headlamp and I definitely love the work I did here. Uh, 1800 looms on a CPU heatsink with a custom mount I made in the bottom. This client is it's the bottom of two cheap flashlights off eBay I got that were crap. So I just tried to demolish the mount and use them on this like this light and that mounts to the front of my bike and it runs off 3.3 volts they're about 2.8 amps each they draw at 3.3 volts so it's pretty awesome so yeah uh, i hope you enjoy all the stuff i've done and uh please let me know your thoughts i would uh, very much appreciate it thank you very much steve steve's out thanks